should I go mad or should I just relax? Because I'm gonna go mad. I'm gonna go mad. Guys, tell me why my order, my next day delivery from Pretty Little Things still hasn't arrived. I don't know. I just don't know. If I did next evening, I'll be next, next tomorrow. I did next day. Tell me why. They're trying to send my item at the time I should be at the event. Like, I have suffered. So yeah, that's my current sitch. But hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna be doing a quick get ready with me and like a little catch up, you know, so you guys can know what's been going on in my life. Besides the whole late um, delivery from Pretty Little Thing. My item's here! <gasps> Woo! So guys, let me quickly change. And then I'll be back on screen to do my makeup and hair. But yeah, guys, I've got a lot to tell you. Like, do you know, they're not describing a lot, just like what's been going on, you know. I want you guys to get to know me a little bit better. I feel like I'm not connecting. I don't even know if I have an audience. And I really want you guys to know me. So I'll be back. So, so guys, I got this. I mean, it was the moon. Go away. I got this little, I don't know if this is what it's meant to look like. That's why it looks ugly. <laughs> like I'm thinking it looks like it's gonna fall down. What's going on? <laughs> Give me a sec. So guys, this is what I got. I like the jeans, the jeans, the jeans are doing me. They're doing all right. I mean, it'll be better if they could just get a bit here, a little bit. All right, let me just, let me just beat the face. Beat the face a little. I'm not gonna lie, these sequins are trying to kill me. It's just poking and poking and poking. But we move. This is what I was screaming for. I don't think it was worth the anger. <clears throat> All right. It's okay. You just have to film it for a few hours, baby girl. I don't know if I'm wearing this top right. Why is my phone trying to die? But let's get this party started. So, guys. Let me tell you something before I start painting my face. God is good. <laughs> God is amazing. And it's funny that I'm starting this message, message with how good God is, because I know that there'll be points in this message where I'll be swearing and I hope he forgives me. But because he's good, I know he will. I'm working on it a little bit, but we move in it. Let me tell you that God is good because <laughs> He has done me well. He has done me well. Hey. <laughs> so guys, I don't know if you guys have been watching my videos for you know a few months now. I put up I put out a video a few weeks ago about not a few weeks ago, a few months ago about um how to get a scholarship a scholarship for bursaries and i was talking to you guys about how i wasn't in um in uni and how i wasn't born here and how this and how that and yeah so let me explain to you exactly what that was about i didn't really want to go into details because it was something that was really touchy because honestly uni was something i wanted to do as soon as i came out of college but i couldn't do it because of certain situations that just wouldn't let me do it like I just couldn't it wasn't in my control it wasn't something that I decided it was out of it wasn't something that I could that I made a decision on so I couldn't go to uni because I wasn't born here I was born in Nigeria shout out to my Nigerians up in here I was born in Nigeria so what that meant was like due to situations my mum wasn't able to you know keep renewing my visa and I don't even blame her because she had you know health issues it's a long story, Jesus. <laughs> it was so she couldn't like work and she couldn't pay for it, she couldn't afford it. And that meant that I wasn't eligible for student finance because I didn't have a certain type of, you know, residency that I needed in order to have government fundings. So fam. It's a bit of a mad one. I think, yeah, let me let me actually start doing my makeup. But the first message is that God is good because I'm going to explain to you why he's good. 
So, during A-levels, like, do you know what? It's annoying because as a kid, your parents leave you out of everything. Every important thing, they think you're too young to understand, to comprehend, to really know what's, or understand what's going on. But I mean, if it's gonna affect my life, I beg you tell me, <laughs> so I can be mentally prepared, like, so this is like in 2017, in January, my A-levels were gonna be in June, was it June or May? Guys, I was, I've been working hard on it because I'm really trying to get out of sixth form, like two years, do my A-levels and get out, you know, the normal timing. I didn't wanna have to like repeat or nothing, like I just wasn't about it. I just wanted to become a lawyer as quickly as possible. And that meant getting my A-levels and going to uni and getting my degree and just getting it done and dusted. So, so now, I come home from school one day and I'm telling my mum, oh mum, we're starting to apply for student finance because of uni. Uni's in um, September, upcoming September. My mum goes, hmm. Well, I don't want you to worry about that because you need, you cannot get student finance because um, your visa now, your visa. I me, mean, I don't know what they're talking about. What do you mean visa? What's visa? I mean, well, do you know what? Because I grew up here, I was so, I was so clueless, oblivious to my own reality and I just forgot where I came from. I forgot that I wasn't one of, you know, the British kids who had everything sorted for them who had life planned out for them because you know this country is really good at that it's really good at really pushing you forward giving you the support that you need and i forgot that i wasn't part of that collective because of my visa i could have been i could have been in that situation whereby i didn't have to worry about student finance or funding my university but i wasn't <clears throat> so hmm <clears throat> So she goes, I can't get it. I'm a bit confused, like, what are you talking about, babe? Because I've really been putting in mad work on my revision and stuff. Like, I'm really trying to ace my A levels. Like, hey, like, babes, what's going on? She goes, yeah, like, it didn't really kick in. And then it kicked in, and I was like, rah, rah, everyone's going uni. Everyone is going to uni. All my age mates, they're gonna be rich, they're gonna be successful, they're gonna find uni husband. <laughs> So, that was no longer an option for me and it was a, it was a, it was a, I was put in a situation where but I had to decide whether or not to fail on purpose or to just put in mad work and just firm it and just firm not going to uni and think of something else to do in the meantime before God blesses me with some kind of funding, isn't it? So, you know, I took, I took the, the, the gap here that I didn't want it, but I had to. I took that gap here. Started working, putting in mad work, getting paid stupid money from one rubbish, rubbish, rubbish job. Paying me £4.44 an hour. <laughs> Piss take that. <laughs> but you know, it was whatever, innit? I found it. I'm thinking like, raw like, this is really what I'm doing with my life. Like, oh my goodness, girl. Like, I've been saying like too much. I need to chill in it. I need to do my eyebrows. Actually, before I sorry, I had to go and do my eyebrows. Before I start jumping, let me just tell you about the impact I had on me during my exam period. <sighs> so, my exam period, you know, it was make it was either it was between you know, speaking English, babe. Speak English. <laughs> It was, I had to make the decision of whether or not to fail on purpose and repeat a year just so that I could have something else to do the following year or to just get it over and done and just like, you know, see exactly what life had in store for me. I was so, I feel, I believe I was depressed. I gained weight. I was, I really struggled. I really struggled to kind of cope with the fact that there was, an important decision being made upon my life that I didn't even have a say in. And you know, I felt so much, I don't know what I felt, but it was towards, you know, me thinking, oh, my mum did this, I'm purple. But you know, looking back now, I know that 
as a single mother of four, it's really hard. So, but you know, when I was young, I was like, oh boy, like, you really ruined my life. Like, you really ruined my life, babe. Like, why did you do that, babe? <laughs> like, why would you do me like that? You know, like, I wanted to do this, you know. I had been in, like, this program where for four years, you know, four years, um, we used to have to do these things called short-term, mid-term and long-term goals. And my short-term goal was to, you know, do my A-levels, ace that thing, and then go to uni. My mid-term goal, get a first-class long-term goal, become a lawyer, become a judge, and become the owner of my own law firm. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Everything was being delayed because of something that I had no say in. I had no say in this. And I couldn't go to uni. I couldn't achieve my midterm goal that was going to lead me to, to my long-term goal. I became so sad. I started, you know, eating a lot as a way of coping. And I just I just don't know how I even survived like in my life today. But I don't know how I did it because, trust me, guys, I really had some bad days. Like, I really, I really, I really, I really struggled. But nobody would know that, though. Nobody around me would know because I'm very, very good at being quiet. Like... I suffer in silence. I do it a lot and it's very like, it's toxic, yes, fair enough, but nobody would understand my pain, you know? Like, everyone's living lavish. No one understands the struggle. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, oh, damn, that is peak. You can't go uni, but you will never feel the pain that I felt in my heart. And that's the fact. So I just kept it to myself. I was firm in it. I was still revising. I was still, you know? And people were wondering, oh, why is he so antisocial? Why is he of this? Why is he of that? But nobody understood what was going on in here, you know. Where there'll be nights I had I had nosebleeds, you know, I was so stressed out that this was now my reality. That I was now powerless. <laughs> I hate talking about this. And you know what? This is a good time to talk about it because I really want to show to you that God is real. <laughs> hey! I need to do my makeup and get the hell out. What the hell, babe? Relax, you know? Like, grow up. <laughs> because, yeah. I was, you know, and then my mom got very ill at some point. And then I had started looking after my siblings. And this was now in May. This was now in May. May exam time. My mom is now, she's now in the hospital. They had to leave, put her in the hospital for four weeks because she was ill. I started looking after my 10 year old brother and my three, four year, three, three year old sister. She was three at the time, 2017. I'm meant to be revising, I'm meant to be focused on me. Everyone's meant to be supporting me. Everyone's meant to be helping me get my results. You know, giving me that time and space to revise and to just chuck as much information into my head as possible. But look at how large it is, because that's how you know I chucked a lot in. <laughs> anyway, like, oh God. I need to really stop talking and get doing this makeup. I don't know if I want to do eyeshadow because I don't really care. I'm not doing eyeshadow. I'm doing my, um, I'm just going to do a plain look. <sighs> so now, I had to be looking after my siblings, you know. Morning comes, get them ready for school. Feed them. <laughs> do things that I shouldn't be doing at the age of 17. Because my birthday was in June, so I was still 17. And do you know what? It's annoying because I understand that there are people in worse situations than I was, but I just, I just didn't understand why life was just kicking me in the ass at that, at that time. Like, I really didn't want to fail. Like, I just didn't want to fail. I just don't want to be another st statistic of black people who just haven't done things as well as they could and they should. I just felt like I was in a battle with myself and the world, really, because whilst I was really trying to strive for something good, life was kicking me in the ass. Like, yeah, and I start. You now have to be the carer, the caregiver to these kids. Like, so you know, I'd, I'd, I'd get back home. I'd have to get to school late. School, my school had to be told, like, informed that I was now their guardian, guiding guard guardian guardian <laughs> i had to spell it to <laughs> to pronounce it i had to become the guardian to my little siblings at the time because mum wasn't around because mum was ill and mum needed to be taken care of by professionals isn't it because her back was hurting so now guys this is going to be very long i'm very sorry in advance so 
I would like wake up with my pillow filled with blood because I was my nose was bleeding. And like I found that that was like what happens to me when I'm like at my peak, like when the stress level is so hard of how my bo my body kind of fights it. So I'd wake up with nosebleeds. I'd have frequent migraines. Like there's even it's, the migraine still character still happens now. Like even to the point that I'm not allowed certain medications, certain things, like I can't take them because, you know, it could cause a stroke. Like the migraines would be so frequent. But who was really gonna listen to my problems when I had little kids to be taken after, to be looking after? And my mom wasn't around for a month when I was doing my A-levels. Like who really and truly could I tell this problems to? They wouldn't, they would never understand. They can never do nothing. They can't do nothing for me. What can you do for me? You know? So I was dealing with all of that by myself. For some for some reason, God bless me with good grades. I got two A's and a B. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. That's how, God is good, you know? So I got those grades, you know? School was really proud, because, you know, considering like what I've been going through during exam period, I came out of those grades. Like, till this day, I know for a fact I could have aced that. I could have aced it. But you know, that's all I could do at the time. I came out of two A's and a B. And now reality, everyone's talking about union accommodations. Everyone's talking about freshers week. Everyone's talking about this, everyone's talking about that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't even know what my life is gonna be spent in two months. Yeah, I don't even know where I'm gonna be in two months. I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't know where, I don't know what's happening. I'm just surviving. I'm just existing. I have no purpose. No purpose is out of the window, you know? And then I thought, okay, cool, what else do I like besides me? I thought, what if people ask me, what am I doing with my life right now? What am I gonna say? Why am I not in uni? What's my explanation for this? Like, why am I not in uni? I didn't want to tell them that it's because I, was a, I wasn't renewing my visa and I was like, blah, 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 blah. Like, I didn't want them to know my life. I thought that was embarrassing. Like, I thought who I was was embarrassing. I thought my story was embarrassing. I didn't want to embarrass myself any further. I didn't tell anyone my story, I just said, oh guys, I'm just taking a gap here because I'm exploring acting. So I started acting for a little bit, I, you know, I joined the theatre, we went on tour with our play, like I did a lot. I joined, you know, I was an intern at a law firm, I did a few things that were very productive. But for the most part, I was unemployed, I got a job, I got fired, I got a job, I got fired, I got a job, I got fired. <laughs> so, not even enough, I got a job, I left that job, I got another job. My contract was done and I got fired after a month not being able to speak, speak Spanish at another job. <laughs> but now guys, I can actually speak um, a bit of Spanish, you know? Like, what? Hola. <laughs> now, now I can speak a little bit. <clears throat> but yeah. So, every year, every year since, you know, 2017, it's now 2019, right? Every, so 2017 I applied for uni, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to go, I wasn't going to be able to fund it, so it was just for bounce, innit? Anyway, I still applied for uni, I'm going into my choices. 2018, I applied again. So I could start this year. Hold on. 2018, I applied again, I applied to LSE. I don't know, why else would I apply to? I was gonna apply to Oxford, but I think they needed an LNAT test. I had already done my LNAT test in 2017 and I got it, but I failed. So, you know, I just don't bother applying to Oxford anymore because, you know, that was a requirement. I wanted to go to UCL as well. They needed an LNAT test, so I said, bun this blood. And then I, saw, I found another great, fantastic uni called London School of Economics and Political Science. It's in London, it's very, it's amazing uni, it's top four. There's Oxford, Cam there's Oxford Cambridge or Cambridge Oxford, I don't know. And then there is one other uni, I think St. George or something. And then there was LSE. What's LSE? And I thought, okay, I'm gonna apply to this one. <laughs> I mean, they want, what they want, uh, what's it called? A, A star something something, but I'm still gonna apply because my God is great. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna still apply, like I will apply what's the worst they can say because really and truly how am i even going to pay for uni i was applying for bands like i would always pay that 24 pounds or 20 something pounds as a joke because i knew that no, i can't even go uni so i'm just doing it to entertain myself just to feel like part of the culture of kids that are you know 
applying for uni. I just wanted to feel included. I was tired. I was just tired of feeling feeling like an outsider. You know. So what the hell? I look mad right now. Alright, and then let's eat. I get an email. I get an email. Oh yeah, check your um, what's it called? Your um, UCAS tracker, track or whatever you call it. And then I see that I've been accepted into LSE. I'm like, is this a joke? Like, wow, I've been accepted into this great uni, but guess who's not going? <laughs> Me, because you know what? I don't have money. <laughs> and you know, like I don't know if I'm an international student as of yet, but I might be an international student where but I'd have to pay 16,000, actually it's 19,304 pounds along those lines to go to LSE. I was like, yeah, who's gonna pay this one for me? So, you know, I just I just didn't really care too tough because yeah, I've been accepting it's a banging uni, like it's a banging uni, you know, it's a good uni, you know, like are you actually having a laugh? A whole me, all I come all I in come I read I nearly called myself my mum's name. <laughs> anyway, her name is banging though. So yeah. What's it called? I got the exception into it. I was like, oh, nice. Every time they would like ask for certain things that they needed just for me to keep my spot, I would entertain it. For example, they told me that I needed to come in to deliver my um, exam results, my A-level results, in order to, to get my unconditional offer to keep my um That's the condition of my offer. And then once I have delivered my results and it's, it's what they want, I will now get my unconditional offer. So I was thinking, oh, okay, I'll just do it just for bands. Like I was just obeying what they said. Like I was just doing everything they said. But I knew, I just knew, I can't pay for this. I knew student finance weren't gonna help me. I just knew it, but I would still do it. Like I would still keep doing it. Like it was fun for me. It was like a way of having hope. You know, it's good to be hopeful because there's so much you could just, just you know, take from yourself if you're not hopeful. You just have to learn to just be hopeful because that's how just life you just have to deal with life that way so i went in i gave them a result i got a response oh yay your spot is now definite you know so i said oh lovely he's gonna pay he's gonna pay and then my mom she would always bug me you can't apply for scholarships babe apply for scholarships i'm like me get scholarships i wasn't born here babe that's what gave me the idea that oh let me make a video for you lots that are actually born here and have a number of scholarships that are available for you because there's really money out there for you and I just don't know if you guys are aware of it. So I just, I was like, cool, like I'm gonna inform you guys on it and make sure that you guys apply even if I'm not, if I'm not eligible, somebody, somebody else will be and somebody else will benefit from this. So I made the video, but then I applied for, I ended up finding a scholarship that was um, for people like me who had a limited leave to remain in the country or were asylum seekers or were refugees and then I said, oh, okay, this is interesting. I'm gonna apply for it. So I did. I, I just knew nothing good happens to me. Nothing good happens to me. Like I've applied for apprenticeships. I wasn't eligible. I've applied for so much. I wasn't eligible. So why on earth would I be getting an entire, like, what makes me think I would get a scholarship? Like, why would I get a scholarship? Like, I'm Yinka, like, I've never had anything great happen to me. So why would a scholarship, a scholarship become my reality? Being awarded a scholarship becomes something that I can say that I was awarded, you know? So I just did it because my mom said, do it. I said, all right, mate, and like, just so she can stop bugging me, I did it. I forgot about it. Like my friends would always be like, "You come, so I'm, I'm not happy that you're not excited about being about getting into LSE." I'm like, babe, babe, you know I can't afford it. You know I can't pay for it. So I would really appreciate not talking about it because it's really depressing. Because it really reminds me that my life is really a mess. Like this uni thing is really a myth for me. Like it's not probably never going to be something that I'm going to experience in the UK at least. So, you know, it was a conversation that I would always try to like avoid. And then I get an email. Oh my god, put that on me. I get an email from LSE. And it goes, Dear Oli Yinka, LSE student ID 2000 and blah, 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 blah. 
congrats, congrats, can't speak English, congratulations, congratulations, but I would like to inform you that, I said what, what are they talking about, like, I saw scholarship, something, something, I said, what are they really talking about, because it says congratulations, usually it's, Unfortunately, we're sorry to inform you that, or we're sorry to inform you that, or unfortunately, in this instance, you haven't. That's what I was ready for. I was. I, I wanted to write the email for them. Well, I'm sorry that you cannot get this boss I'm sorry you cannot get this. Eh? So I was ready for it. Like I was mentally ready. Like I had to be pessimistic for my own sanity because if I did have hope, like I said, I always have hope. But in this instance, I just knew that hope would be my downfall if I did have it, and then and then I and then it comes back as oh I didn't get it. I don't know what I would do. Like, I just don't know what I would do. So I just didn't have any hope. I just left it as it was. Like I just left it all to God, really. I just left it all to God. And then I get the email. <laughs> I went. I went mad. I went so mad. Are you mad? I nearly broke the house. Hey yo, I was jumping, I was, that's the happiest I've ever been. I felt like I was, oh you know, I felt like I was, I was, I was, I had been living in the dark for so long and as soon as that news came in, like the whole earth, like my entire surrounding became brighter. Like I could see it was now light, like it was lighter, like I I don't know it was just like it was just light for me like I could see I could see how bright it was because you know I didn't even like it I experienced that kind of you know I don't know why that was my experience but I felt like well I'm no longer in the dark I can finally see like life isn't as bad anymore so <laughs> I told my mom, mom, I got the scholarship. Everybody went bonkers. Every my mom was like, yeah, I sing it gospel music. I was like, yeah, I got to get it. Funny thing is they gave me the scholarship and um the bursary. My mom forced me to apply for the extra for the extra four thousand. In my head, I'm like, babe, I'm not gonna get this this um 20 grand. So what makes you think I'll be getting the extra four thousand on top? Like I need to not be greedy, but she said you can't apply for it. And it ended up giving me both, meaning that I got like 24k a year. And it's like the scholarship follows on to the next year if my results are good on the first year and for the rest of my you know, education at LSE. And I said, is this really what God had in store for me? And I had just, and, and, and it's like, I couldn't see it. And I couldn't just manage to be patient. I, I, I went through all this dark phase, those dark days of just darkness and sadness and rem and what is it? I don't know what to call it. Meanwhile, God was really cooking up something for me. Whilst I was praying for student finance, God was praying for scholarship. God was sorting out my scholarship for me. Whilst I was praying for a loan that I would have to return. God was sorting out free money. God works in mysterious ways. He works in mysterious ways. What you pray for, you will receive better things, better, better than you expected. He goes over, he goes over and beyond for us. And that's something that I, sh I will never forget that. And you know what? I'm very tired of this idea that you need to go to church every day. For God to really see that you're a good Christian, or for you to show that you're a really good Christian, or for God to answer your prayers, but you don't. Because I work every Sundays at my at this job I work at. I haven't been to church in months. Like I can't remember the last time I went to church. I just haven't been in about what five months. But God answered my prayers. God answered my prayers. He answered my prayers. He answered me. He he listened to my to my to my cries, my cries to him, and he answered it. And he came back with more than I expected. And I'm just grateful, you know. Like my God is good. 
it's so good but there were parts of the story that i skipped because i just wanted to land on how i got a scholarship so yeah i got the scholarship guys so i hope this is an inspiration for you guys you know if you're in a similar situation as i was or, you know don't think it's the end like i did don't give up don't forget that god is good and god has got you keep the faith and he will certainly 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 have your back like he had mine because i'm no different to you why am i more deserving than you exactly so i'm just saying keep searching keep looking you will find a scholarship for you and you will get it pray on it put all your hard work on it write the most amazing statement on it and that and that money will be yours you know don't give up on yourself don't give up on yourself like i nearly did where is my thingy but yeah guys I think that's the moral of my story for today. Whoa, this needs to chill. Please don't give up. Keep working at it. Keep working on your faith. Keep working on yourself. Your mental state is very important. I could have gone mad when God held it down. <laughs> I'm nearly done with my makeup, we thank God, you know, because it's been a very long time. And I'm really sorry that this video will be long, but it's a cool story. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's really, like, for the most part, what has been happening to me in my life for the past few weeks. You know, I'm just still in my happy period. I'm still very happy with where I am right now. Like, I'm not, I'm not sad anymore. I'm happy. And now I feel like I can really be me on 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 YouTube. Like I don't have anything to hide because this was something I was definitely embarrassed about because I just didn't know if people were in the same situation as I was, and I didn't want to put my life out there. And then it's like, oh my god, that's 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 mad. Like whole peak, like whoa. Like I'm not. I don't want to be a, a. I don't want people to feel sorry for me. You know, that's not what I want. I want you to learn from what, what I ever had to deal with, and. That's what I want. I want you guys to learn from me. I don't want you to see me. I mean, sometimes be vulnerable, but I guess I guess I've learned that as well. But it's alright to be vulnerable. But yeah, guys, thank you for listening to this. Let me just quickly, you know, finish my makeup and I'll be back to round this video. Up. Guys, guess who's finally ready to go? To go, to go, to. <laughs> um, I'm probably gonna add one more video outside, just so you guys can see exactly what I'm wearing. Anyways, guys, thank you for joining me on this video. You know, I've just said you guys a little bit about situations. So yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. You guys took away some kind of lesson from me. I don't know, but I just ultimately, I think I want you guys to leave feeling like you've gotten to know me a bit better. And yeah. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. And also, guys, I'm in need of a friend. As you can see, I have no friends. I literally have two mates, and that's it. And we need to do better. <laughs> I need to do better. And yeah, so I'm really looking for good friends in my life. If you feel like you're a good friend, hit me up. Hit me up. You feel me? So yeah. 
I'm gonna do a quick quick shine shine. Shine shine but I'll get it to that. <laughs> Alright, cool. Quick, quick blend. Uh -huh. <laughs> These jeans are popping. I feel like it really is really showing my little tiny waist. But I just hate that it's not fitted here. But we move, man. We move. Alright, bye guys. <laughs>